The Occupy movement, the Bipartisan Congressional Super Committee, deficits, taxes, fairness, economic inequality, they're all very much in the air right now. Over the past few months, we've been exploring these issues in a series of reports and conversations. Tonight, we hear from a group that wants higher taxes on itself. They call themselves Patriotic Millionaires for Fiscal Strength, and members were on Capitol Hill lobbying today. Joining us now is one of the group, Garrett Gruner, founder of Ask.com, and now director of the venture capital firm Alta Partners. Welcome to you. Nice to be here. First, I want you to define this group. Who, who are you? How many? And, and, and where do you come? Where do the members come from? These are about 200 folks so far who uh, are, make a substantial amount of money and who believe that the, uh, it's time to roll back the, the Bush tax cuts, that uh, essentially what we need to do for the, uh, for the sake of the country is to tax folks like ourselves more. And, and is there a consensus on, on how much more when you talk about, uh, you're talking about the marginal rate? That's right. We, we're talking about moving back to the marginal rate that prevailed under President Clinton of 39.6 percent on, in this case, folks who make more than a million dollars a year. What's the argument? Why? Well, simply, first of all, the country needs the money, um, and we think it's the right thing to do. Uh, we think that, you know, like other Americans, we love this country, and that those in the in the upper one percent essentially have been treated. Uh, well, too good for their own sake, too good for the, the sake of the countries. We, we've all done very well, and it's time to give back. And, and how did this get organized, or how did it come about? Well, I, I think there are a variety of people who came together. I wrote an op-ed uh, that ran in the LA Times that um, entitled Tax Me More, um, and that was certainly one of the uh, strains. But I think a variety of people came to the same conclusion, that the relentless desire on the part of the Republicans to push down marginal rates was causing us to have an excessive deficit, which we believe is a big problem, and to underinvest in uh, things that we think are critical for a, a good society. Now, uh, Warren Buffett, the billionaire, famously put this forward a few months ago, and he got a lot of pushback, and we hear uh, uh, regularly ar the argument from many Republicans, you shouldn't raise taxes on those who create jobs, right. particularly at a time like this when we need those jobs. Well, that's something I can speak to directly. I'm, I have built up a number of companies myself, and I've been a venture capitalist now for almost 20 years. Um, so I've been involved in the creation of lots of high technology companies, companies in life sciences, in, the, uh, in software and hardware, now in uh, clean tech, and I'm currently running a company in the, uh, that's built on nanotechnology. And I can say for myself that not a single one of those investments, not one, was ever impacted by marginal tax rates. I invested under the Clinton rates, I invested under the Bush rates, I invested in the rates before that. And by the way, in history, the rates were much higher than they are today. But why do we hear that so often from small million, the millionaire class, which is, includes many small businesses we hear? Why do we hear that tax rates do have an impact on whether they start their business, whether they hire that one extra person? Mm. I think it's, frankly, I think it's a myth. I think that this is something that, it's a good line. It, um, it, it, it certainly, if it were true, if it were a critical aspect of growing the economy, then I might be a supporter of it. But uh, my own experience is it literally has had zero impact on the investment decisions that I've made. And when you think about it, it makes perfect sense that the kinds of things that I'm doing, at least, you, you know, in venture capital, what we're trying to do is grow companies that have the ability to grow into major companies and employ a lot of people. Sometimes we get it right, sometimes we get it wrong, but anyway, that's always the objective. And if that's the case, a few points of marginal tax rate, one way or the other, are not going to make a big difference. Critics also pushed back at Warren Buffett and others and, and said, look, the, 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 the wealthiest already pay a far higher share of taxes in this country than anyone else. And, 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 and in that sense, the fairness factor is already there. Well, there's, there's a number of elements of fairness in all of this. In the end, if you have an awful lot more income, you have more wherewithal to pay taxes. And in this country, we've gotten to real extremes of wealth um, being controlled by the upper 1%. We're now an outlier internationally. And it got so bad that in, um, or so good, depending on how you want to think about this, um, that in 2007, 
the upper 1% was capturing 23.5% of all of the income. Uh, the last time that had happened was 1928. And I believe that the, what happened next, the Great Depression in 1929 and the Great Recession of um, 2008, was a direct result of that bias in the distribution of income. You know, some of your uh, members of your group today met with Grover Norquist, the uh, anti-tax uh, crusader, and he has said of, of Buffett and, and, and your uh, efforts here, he said you want to pay, essentially he and others say, you want to pay more taxes? Be my guest. You know, go ahead. Just do it. Put your money where your mouth is. You don't need, a whole, you don't need to change the law. Go ahead and do it. Right. Uh, Gro Grover's position, I literally heard him saying this uh, uh, about an hour ago, is that uh, if you want to up your own taxes, why don't you just make a contribution? Mm -hmm. And I think, frankly, that's pathetic. The, uh, the U.S. government is not a charity. We didn't, take, we didn't pass the hat when we decided to go into Afghanistan. We don't pass a hat when we decide whether or not to, the country needs another aircraft carrier or to build a freeway or what have you. What we do is we make a decision as Americans, and then we fund it. And alas, we've gotten out of the habit recently of understanding that the decisions we make as a country are decisions we have to pay for. And uh, we need to make sure that the funding resources, that the revenues are there in order to meet the choices we make collectively. Now, you know, I think it's a good thing to debate whether or not these taxes should be increased for the upper 1%. Obviously, I strongly believe we should. But if we decide that, well, then it's the law of the land, and we're all responsible for paying. All right. And that's what we're arguing for. Garrett Gruner, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much.